This is one of the um, most highly questioned um, aspects while you're rounding with um, um, your attending physicians on medicine, cardiology, or even surgery. And uh, while my students are rotating, um, I ask them those questions all the time. And every single time, they make a mistake. And that's why I'm doing this video. Basically, students, residents, everyone has to uh, differentiate between DVT prophylaxis and anticoagulation. And um, basically, DVT prophylaxis means that your blood is thin a little bit to prevent a deep vein thrombosis. Anticoagulation means that your blood is very, very thin. So let's go through the agents that we use in, um, in the hospital and see what are the doses and how can we use them. Now, aspirin, Plavix, and all other antiplatelet agents cannot be used for DVT prophylaxis or anticoagulation. Basically, those are antiplatelets. They are not for prophylaxis and they're not for anticoagulation. Let's go for the next agent, which is warfarin. We know that warfarin acts uh, as an antagonist for vitamin K. And it's variable uh, how we use it between patients because patients react differently. We don't use it for DVT prophylaxis. We use it for anticoagulation. And things that you have to remember that it usually takes five days for it to work. And you have to remember that it's variable. Patients act um, uh, differently to the doses. And you have to remember that if you really need the patient to be anticoagulated for the first five days, you might need another agent on top. Now, what if someone develops um, life-threatening bleeding? What are you gonna do? So ways to reverse it is vitamin K, you can give them FFP, but currently um, the answer, if, if this shows in, uh, in one of your questions, it's for PCC, prothrombin complex concentrate. Now, what about heparin? Can we use heparin for DVT prophylaxis? Yes, and usually the dose is 5,000 units, and we give them subcutaneously, either BID or TID. What about heparin for anticoagulation? Heparin for anticoagulation is only done through intravenous, and we usually give a bolus followed by a drip, means continuous. And the reason why we do that is because heparin stays um, for a short time in the blood and you need it continuously in order to maintain anticoagulation. Again, for heparin, in order to make sure that your blood is thin enough for the diagnosis that you need, you have to keep on measuring the PTT and that will tell you if your blood is thin enough or no. And uh, the range for the PTT is different according to the diagnosis um, you're anticoagulating for. What about the low molecular weight heparin, or what we call enoxaparin or lovenox. Well, for DVT prophylaxis, the dose is um, 40 milligrams sub-Q once daily. It's very easy. What about for anticoagulation dose? The anticoagulation dose is weight-based, and it is one milligram per kilogram and you have to do that dose twice a day. So if someone's um, weight is 100 kilogram, you give him 100 milligram uh, sub-Q. 100 milligram sub-Q in the morning and 100 milligram sub-Q in the evening. There's another dose which is 1.5 milligram per kilogram and that's just once daily sub-Q. You have to remember that uh, Lovenox um, with uh, uh, kidney dysfunction, you might have to change the dose. There is a way to uh, uh, see if uh, the blood is thin enough, uh, which is factor 10 ASA, 
but it's not used that much sometimes it might take two to three days uh, for it to come back um, and some hospitals don't even have that assay now what about the newer oral anticoagulants those are the ones that we see on TV apixaban dabigatran rivaroxaban and then we have edoxaban um, their use is getting more frequent right now uh, because they don't need um, um, any frequent tests like the warfarin the warfarin patients have to go and get INR checked um, at the beginning you have to do it every two to three days and then weekly and then if the INR stabilizes you'll do it every month and usually um, the normal INR is one but for anticoagulation you need that number to be um, above two if someone uh, has a very high risk of uh, uh, thrombogenicity like someone who has a mechanical valve be, uh, doctors may actually recommend a higher cutoff like two and a half to three and a half now the NOACs are really easy to easily used because they don't need um, checking of any labs you just give the medication and they're oral no injections no sub-q no IV and then they will work one thing that you have to remember is that every um, every one of those has a different dose and some of them have a certain dose for uh, uh, kidney dysfunction and that makes it easier for us to use in uh, patients who are old who are fragile the only downside of uh, newer oral co uh, coagulants is that uh, we don't have reversal um, agents except for dabigatran whereas there, there is a reversal agent it's very expensive and it's directly against dabigatran now if you have a patient who is on apixaban, adoxaban or rivaroxaban and they come in with a, um, a significant bleeding in the head well you're gonna do something you're not gonna leave the patient alone in that case you will give them uh, the four uh, PCC which is the prothrombin complex concentrate the other question is, can I use the um, NOAX for the DVT prophylaxis? Well, I'm going to tell you, yes, there are doses. And uh, usually orthopedics um, uh, service will use that. But remember that those medications are really expensive. So would you rather do this uh, for DVT prophylaxis or would you do it with heparin or lovenox, which is much cheaper and generic? And those are the things that you have to consider whenever you give medications so um, to sum up make sure that you understand that dvt prophylaxis means that your blood is a little bit thin but not that thin anticoagulation means that your blood is really thin and we use it to uh, medically treat mi pe dvt and those are your options Recognize the difference between oral, IV, and sub-Q. Heparin can be given sub-Q or IV. Enoxaparin can be given sub-Q or IV, but we usually use it in sub-Q, while NOAX are given orally. NOAX and warfarin are the best treatment uh, when you're sending someone home and for uh, long term, while heparin and enoxaparin are used in the hospital. Some patients who have um, um, cancer would require an oxoparin injections at home because it was shown that um, if someone has a DVT or a PE and they have underlying malignancy, an oxoparin is to go um, uh, agent rather than warfarin. And this is a simple and a very summarized um, lecture about DVT prophylaxis and anticoagulation. One thing I want you to remember, aspirin and plavix will never be appropriate for DVT prophylaxis or anticoagulation.